Hi, it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec, and I'm so excited to announce that I'll be participating in the 2020 YouTube collaboration for the love of crafting and sharing. We'll be posting themed videos on the 20th of each month, and we're kicking off the new year with a kind of get to know the scrapbooker series. So we're all going to be posting process videos about using our favorite supplies, favorite techniques, favorite go-to designs. So be sure to check out the other participants in this collaboration. I'll put links to all of their channels in the information box below. So my video today is a tutorial for a multi-photo clean graphic layout. That's my favorite kind of layout. And here are the products I'll be using. I have paper from Photoplay's O Canada collection, as well as stamps and dies. And I love my tools, so I'll talk more about them as I use them. I did some preparation in advance. I trimmed and matted these photos, and I also selected my paper. I thought it looked nice with my outdoorsy photos. And I prepared a frame style foundation with three pieces of paper. It's something I often do. And I gutted two of them. And as a matter of fact, that black cardstock that I matted my photos with, that came from the foundation page. Now this O Canada collection didn't have embellishments to support my theme. This is a, an activity I did in Iceland. So I went through my tools and I found that Mountain Air Bundle. It's a brand new one by Stampin' Up. I also have those letter dies by Alt New and this film strip from the In Love Art Shop. The first thing I'm going to do is create a layered border with three strips of paper. And I'll adhere these three pieces together, but for the time being, I'm going to leave them full length. But later on in the video, I trim it down a bit. So the measurements you're seeing on the screen are for the final project, not for what I'm doing here right now, especially for this particular border. Also, you're going to see me playing around with photos a bit. Basically, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to fit all of this on the page. So my plan is basically to create kind of a grid, a little bit messy, towards the left-hand side of the page. And I'm adhering this three-stripped border together, but I'm not going to adhere anything to the page quite yet because I do have a fair amount I want to fit onto the page so I don't want to commit quite yet because once I have the photos in place I still need room to place a title and a text and of course some decorations. I think I already mentioned this I do plan on putting my title and my text towards the right hand side of the page and I need a home for that so what I'm doing now is cutting myself a block with this green paper. I have a little journaling box that comes from Project Life but it looks kind of lost you're going to see it in a minute on that green paper so I decide to cut myself a mat for this uh, journaling box in that plaid paper and I'm going to cut it actually a bit longer because what I want to do is create kind of a base for an embellishment cluster just below that journaling box and actually that's where my title is going to be. Actually, that whole block there on the right, that's going to be my main embellishment cluster. Now I'm getting out the dies. So these two sets of dies I cut in advance. For the letters, it's because I had 22 of them and had to add adhesive, so I thought that would be very long. And for that film strip die, it's a very inexpensive die. And although it's very cute, it was a bit of a pain to cut it out because there's a lot of little dots in there. And I had to go in with a paper piercing tool to dig it out. So I didn't want to waste time on camera doing that. Now what you see me doing is using this new stamp set and die bundle by Stampin' Up! called Mountain Air. So I'm stamping a mountain range and I'm going to do the same thing with some trees and then I'll cut it out. But I want you to see how I'm actually positioning the stamp for the trees. I'm putting the stamp on the block, but then I'm using the die as a guide how to place the stamp. And the reason why I'm doing this is just before making this video, I played around with this set for the first time and the mountain range worked out perfectly. But when I went to cut out the trees with the dies, it was like the die didn't fit the stamp. Now this has happened to me before with these 
photo polymer stamps. They're quite flexible and when they're big, sometimes that happens. So if you use the die as a guide to place the stamp on the block, it usually works out quite well and you're going to see it in a minute. Mine cut out perfectly with the trees. Also, what I'll do is I'll flash on the camera the first one I did and you'll see what I mean. It really didn't fit. This is going to serve as the base to an embellishment cluster to my title underneath the journaling box. And I'll do that in a bit. But what you're also going to see is I have a whole bunch of page parts that I have to start gluing down. And it's at this point that I decide to trim that border. So basically I want the border just to come to where the black foundation page begins. So that measures 11 and a half inches long. And then I'll start gluing everything else down here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about those letters because when I was selecting tools and embellishments for this page, I knew the title was going to be long. There's 22 letters in it. I have four photos and I did want a title and I did want journaling. So I needed small letters. And this set of letters by Alt New is called a Tall Alpha Set. So they're very narrow and so I could fit more letters on the page. There was another reason why I selected this. You're going to notice the first letter in the first word of the title um, is a strange looking P, but it's not a P at all actually. This is a national park in Iceland and in Iceland there are 32 letters in their alphabet as opposed to our 26. They have our 26 letters but they have some extra ones including that letter there and I wanted to you know, um, make the letter like it was supposed to look like for this word. So I could tell by looking at this alpha set that I could kind of Frankenstein a letter with it. So basically I took the letter B, chopped off the bottom bubble and managed to fashion myself this strange letter, which sounds like TH. Anyway, what I'm doing now is placing my title and I end up really liking how this looks. But this black here is actually going to be the inspiration for my two other complementary embellishment clusters. I want to create kind of a visual triangle around the page. And like I said, this whole journaling box title area, that entire thing, I'm considering it an embellishment cluster, the main one. But now I'm creating two other small ones. So I'm tucking in those film strips there. And although they were difficult to cut out, I do find them very cute. I'm filling in the hearts with those green hearts. And now what I'm going to do is simply add another little spot in this main embellishment cluster. So I'm adding this little film wheel with the hearts and a little camera. The most difficult thing for me here is not adding foam adhesive to those hearts and the camera. If it were two weeks ago, I'd be doing that. But in 2020, my goal here is to make pages that are flatter. I love my foam adhesive, but I did it way too much last year. I scrapbook a lot and my albums were just way too thick. So this year I'm trying to add dimension just with paper layers, but trying to add dimension with less foam adhesive. So you'll see that as the year goes along if you watch more of my videos. Anyway, I'm almost done here. All I have to do is add my journaling and I actually stamp a few clouds above that journaling box. You'll see that in the stills at the end of the video. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to Scrapbooking Quebec, I would love it if you did. Also, don't forget to check out the other crafty YouTubers who are participating in this collaboration and Thank you so much for watching. Happy New Year.